Hi, my name is Corey Tedrow. I am a senior solutions specialist with Avid, and I'm going to talk to you today about round tripping content between Avid Media Composer and Adobe After Effects. So let's get started. I have some content here that I want to send over to After Effects and do some graphics work on it. So we're just going to cut together a quick timeline here of some elements that I want to send across. And then once I have that cut down the way I like it, it's just a series of clips here, we can send it out as an AAF and export it. First I'm going to give it a name. And then we'll go to the output menu and choose our output settings. So when you're sending to After Effects, you want to send an AAF. So you're going to choose to export as an AAF. It's very important that you choose AAF Edit Protocol when you're sending to After Effects. And obviously you want to include our video and you can include audio if you need to. I don't have any audio. Most important, we want to link to, not export the media. So I'm sending this to the same system, so After Effects will be able to link to the same media files that Media Composer is linking to. And then we save those settings and do an export. It's very fast, it's just sending metadata out. And now we can move over to After Effects. When we do an import to After Effects, we want to choose Pro Import After Effects. That is how you bring an AAF into Adobe After Effects. You don't do a regular file import, you do a Pro Import After Effects. We'll navigate down to the AAF that I just saved out of Media Composer and bring that in. Import's very fast, it's just bringing in the metadata and it comes in as a composition. So you'll see now in my After Effects um, composition window, I have the same exact timeline as I did inside of Media Composer. Same files, linking to the same files, same timeline. So now we're going to move over to After Effects and we'll add a graphic element here just for demonstration purposes, just so we see something different here. Make a little change. So we've added that to our video elements. And now we can add that to our render queue. I've saved a setting for DNxHD QuickTime. It doesn't have to be DNxHD, that's just what I've chosen. And now we're going to save out our QuickTime just to the desktop. And I'm doing this on um, the same computer, so we can just save it to the desktop. Uh, this would also work in a shared environment, so if you have an After Effects station connected to a system with a Media Composer shared environment, you could do the same workflow. And so now that's rendered out and we're going to come back over to Media Composer. Now the first thing we need to do, this is very important, is we need to go into our settings window, into our link settings, and enable our QuickTime Live Link settings. That's in the Link Options tab. And you'll see here I already have it enabled. So we want to make sure that QuickTime Live Link is checked in order for this workflow that I'm about to show you to work. So now that we know that that's on, we're going to go into our source browser and we're going to link to the QuickTime that we just saved out of After Effects. So now you'll see I have uh, the finished After Effects composition as a QuickTime in Media Composer. And we will cut that in. Uh, I want to bring it in as a, as a bumper for this um, sequence I have here in Media Composer. So I'll just cut that in to my timeline. And so now you see I have the QuickTime element um, linked in my timeline inside of Media Composer. So now we're going to go back to After Effects and let's say, you know, in typical workflows, someone's going to make some changes to the composition. That's what I'm going to do here. So we're going to make a change that's um, visually different enough so that you can see a change. So I'm just going to add some color here. We'll change the opacity, obviously, so we can see the video. And then I'll move it down a layer so that the graphic isn't affected. So there, now I've, I've basically come up with V2 of my composition. And you'll see that V1 is what I'm still linked to inside of Media Composer. So I've got that cut into my timeline. Version 1 of my composition is in Media Composer still. But we're going to move back to After Effects. And now I'm going to render out version 2. My orange colored version of the composition is going to be rendered out same method, we're going to choose DNxHD. And then when we go to output the QuickTime, I want to overwrite 
my first QuickTime, so I need to give it the same name. And then when I choose to save it, After Effects is going to ask me, oh, you've got the same name, do you want to replace it? And I'm going to say yes, I want to replace the file. And then we hit render, it renders it out, and it's going to replace the file in the same folder path. So when we move back over to Media Composer, you'll see that Media Composer has automatically updated and is now linked to version 2 with the orange color in it. Version 2 of the QuickTime is now updated directly in the timeline in Media Composer without having to do anything. It just happens automatically. All right, let's take a look at this again. I'm going to approach the workflow a little differently this time. Uh, we're going to still uh, start off by linking to our first version, our V1 of what we're calling the Montage 01 MOV. So I now have that in Media Composer and I'm linking to my first version that I've cut into my sequence. Now instead of just showing you the export and overwrite from After Effects, we're going to go down to the desktop and I'm going to manually overwrite the file from um, another folder. So you'll see I have a final folder there and that has the updated new version. And I can just manually replace the file there and you'll see that it automatically updates inside of Media Composer. So this is just an example of if you wanted to save your versions. So I have my draft folder there and then I have my final folder. Again important that they both have the same exact name but now you can see if I want to, I can go back and replace the final version with the draft version and it updates in Media Composer. You can do this all day, updating back and forth. Now I've been demonstrating this to you on a Mac system. This workflow and feature will also work on a PC. It's totally cross-platform. And that is how you round trip content between Avid Media Composer and Adobe After Effects. Mm -hmm.